heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, Lady Cheryl here and I'm outside, I'm back home and I'm taking a walk around my food forest and I'm in my old raggedy house dress. You don't want to see that. <laughs> anyway, um, let me share with you um, how everything looks. I'm very happy. We're home for one day and then we head back out late tonight for Missouri and this time we're going to a resort and uh, we sleep inside, but everything is uh, the activities, jet skiing, boating, all that kind of stuff, fishing is all outside. Okay, so let's let you see what's going on. Okay, I just thought I'll start with this squash plant. I'm going to go in closer and just show you how beautiful the dew has outlined the edge of the squash leaves. Isn't that pretty? Just amazing. But this uh, plant has shown a lot of growth since I left. The good news is it rained twice while I was away. So everything is looking lush and green. Let's go up under the gazebo and show you the growth on the sour sops. Looking nice. The water is still, uh, content is still there. It's still moist. Um, yeah, everything is still moist. You can see that that is damp. The ginger. Yeah, everything is wet. Or damp, I should say. I may give this tree and this planter a little water because it didn't get too much water rain the way it the way it's positioned up under this placebo let's look over here the uh, comfrey and all the planters that were in the saucers have absorbed water the marigold seedlings that i transplanted in here and here and i still have more to transplant i'll do that when i get back i'm just in town for a day to regroup and check everything out and then we're headed back out we're going this time to Missouri to the Ozark and we will be staying at a resort this will go in the ground the country one two this is two and this is the last little tiny piece I planted surrounded by marigolds I will water them like I said uh, yeah we're going to uh, the Ozark um, it's a uh, resort that has a lot of outdoor activities, so we won't be confined um, in the uh, cabins. But we will still practice social distancing, and you know, and like we did when we were, we were traveling to uh, Tennessee. But we won't have to when we're outside as much. Okay, sweet potatoes are doing good. Let me start over here. This okra plant looking good. Echinacea. Tomato plants doing good. Soil still real moist. I won't have to water hardly anything. I left the covering. I decided at the last minute to leave the covering off of the, this squash. It's doing well. This right here is a magnolia branch. I'm going to continue to leave the cover off of this squash because it's blooming. I want it to get pollinated. But right now, all I have is male flowers. So here is the purslane I told you guys I was going to plant. I think I actually demonstrated it because it has a lot of growth. Um, Still just looking at the squash but if you look at my last video and look at the tremendous growth in just a few days, it's awesome. Here, the peppers are doing really well. 
They have gotten bigger. These are the ones that I grew from seeds. Okay. <laughs> what a difference a few days make. Let me zoom in up closer and let you see the blooms on the um, Japanese eggplant. Let me go around to the other side. Here's another Japanese eggplant. The beans over here are just about over. I will put the uh, pulling them down when I get back and plenty my second crop uh, of green beans. Okay, let's look in the second bed. As you can see, the cucumber vines are growing all the way up in the palm granite tree. Let's see if we can harvest any cucumbers. Oh, I missed one, guys. Uh, that happens when you take a vacation. See right here, it's gotten turned yellow. But I still can scoop the seeds out and enjoy it with uh, tomato and make it like a uh, vinaigrette. More cucumbers over there. Here are more Japanese eggplant. I suspect when I get back in town, they will have tiny fruit on them. And the peppers I grew from seeds are putting on some peppers. That's cool. Here's a little small one right here. So this is garden bed number two. Marigolds look still going strong in the society garlic. Okay. As you can see here, our second round of morning glories. Let's start at the bottom. Going all the way up. I even put a piece of shade cloth across here because I didn't know how hot it was going to get. And the uh, sweet potatoes are now in this planter, are now beginning to climb up the arbor. My mimosa tree oh, still has some water in it, but I'm going to water it again. Here's a slug. Check it out, guys. You see where it's been eating that sweet potato leaf? I'm going to put it here for right now and examine the plant and see if there are any more. Don't see any damage. Okay, the hanging planters are doing well. The sun is coming up. Sweet potatoes are doing good over here. Climbing up the arbor. Check that out, guys. Just like I wanted it to. And let's see if I can train this one. I'll do the same thing with this long, these long vines. I'll coax them to go up. Later on today, I'm going to take these hanging strawberry uh, plants, the vines. I'm going to stick them into empty spaces in the soil so they can take root. You can't cut them off. If you're new to gardening, you just cannot cut this off. Let me move back. You can't just cut this out and stick it in the soil. You have to take this crown right here, stick it in some dirt, whether it's in the container or outside the container in a small pot. And then once it roots, you can cut it off. So I'll come out and I'll pick strawberries from these six uh, containers and the ones over there. They're growing really pretty, really well. Look at this cucumber vine here and I see a slug. I see a slug. See it? Follow my finger. And get this vine out the way. Right there. So I'll go around the other side and get it. Okay, I'll be back. Remember, a good time to check for slugs is after it rains. It rained yesterday here. Slugs like damp conditions, but they don't want to get real wet. So they will climb. They will climb so they won't drown in the water. Rainwater, that is. OK, 
Okay, so the blooms in this garden bed, this is garden bed number two, the blooms on the Japanese eggplant look very pretty and I suspect when I come back from the second part of my vacation they will have some fruit on it. Let's go back in the food forest and let's look at some of these trees. I noticed growth. Everything looks good. Let me check this uh, cherry tree that's being crisscrossed by um, elderberry. Let's check the soil. It's still damp. I don't think I have to water much. Those are the Ronia berries. They're getting a little bigger. This fig tree is really doing well. Remember, this is the one that died all the way back and came back. Here's a little ant. I like to kill those little ants by just squishing them because usually where there's ants, there are aphids. There were a lot of stink bugs. Yep, I see them. Let me show you guys. They're not stink bugs. They're leaf hoppers. They're moving around. You see it hop? <laughs> That's okay. There's one that I got. Um, here's another one right up here. Let's see if you can see it. You try to get it. Yep. See it right there at the edge? My thumb just squishing it I couldn't do that years ago but now I can when you take two pencil cuttings and you turn them into trees what I'm trying to say is you learn to do things that you normally couldn't do to protect them but the tree itself looks really well so they haven't sucked too much life out of it I will spray them after everything dries up with my bug repellent. Good. I'm not going to go through all of the trees. I'm just, you know, doing a general inspection. I noticed that the apples have gotten bigger since I was out of town. Let's see. Apples over here. Yeah, they have grown. Okay, I'm gonna look up under here at the muscadines and see, yes, they're smaller than a marble, but they have gotten bigger. Okay. Yeah, happy about that. Let me go up here so you can see them. And I'm not enlarging it, it so it's pretty good. The grapes, I harvested most of these from these two uh, plants before I left. The birds got most of them. But this, uh, these two, actually that was from one vine here. This vine right down here and the one on the other side of this arbor, the grapes, Concord grapes are not ripe. If I had not squished that slug in my hand, I would pop this in my mouth, but I need to wash it off. So when I get back, um, there will be some grapes to harvest from this vine. But the birds are getting the right ones. Let me get up. Let me get up higher so I can show you how massive the grapevine is and the mustard vines. The area right there where it's dying off, that's what I already harvested. And the part that's still vivid green is what I have left. And let me see if I can zoom in. There we go. And you can see those clusters of grapes. They're still green. Okay. The corn. Let me go back to a regular setting that I planted in the ground for the first time. It's doing well. That's comfrey and echinacea. Comfrey. A Santa Rosa plum tree. A whole valley of comfrey over here that's overgrown. And I need to uh, harvest more. These apples are getting much bigger. The Gala apple tree is humongous. It looks great with all that echinacea. And let's look at the 
fool you persimmons. Getting a little blush of yellow. So they're going to be ripening up. Here's some new growth right here. I didn't know it was that wild before I left. And I see where the fuyus are trying to start to ripen. Let me show you. See right here? We're going to be eating those soon. And right here, here is a Yates persimmon. It's doing well. Apple trees in here. Palm granite tree. Do everything looks good. I'm not going to have to do too much watering. Now, let's go over here. The corn is looking fabulous. Okay, I got one down here. Probably bad storm. A male flower. In the blue herbert squash. The leaves are humongous. And I'm hoping that I can support some fruit on these four galvanized steel posts. Look how huge that leaf is. I mean, let me just go in one corner of it and look how much is left. I'm going to go down here at the bottom and let you see how much leaf is left. Yeah, the corn is doing good. And there's one leaning slightly over there. But I'm not going to pull anything up. Uh, don't have to water any of this. This bed looks good. It should go for a couple of days. And like I said, it's supposed to rain while I'm gone. Okay, so now let's walk over here. Collard greens are going to seed. I will collect some of those soon and share it with you. Wow. Talking about growth. Look at that blue Herbert squash. Just latching on to anything that it can. It's all the way to the top, guys. See that, Tyndall? right there it's going to latch onto that chain of the um hanging baskets it's growing like crazy wow just beautiful give you another view of the corn from this side gorgeous nice and green and healthy now let's go back over here let you see how the squash is doing. Wow. Okay, so it's up inside of that uh, tomato cage. So we just let it, just let it do what it's doing. It's looking really good. I mean, the growth is tremendous. Okay, I see a leaf hopper right here. Can you see it? I think it's a leaf hopper. I'm gonna try to get it. Yep, it was. Just a light little squeeze, and I got it. Okay, let's step back and look at the pepper plants. Can you see them? Tremendous growth and bushy. About four feet high, maybe five, yeah, four feet. When I come back into town, I suspect that our pepper plants can get a little bit more sun. So you see the shade cloth? I'm gonna clip it up higher and let more sun come in so that these babies can start bearing more fruit. Takes a long time for pepper plants, but, and I see some fruit, little small baby fruit, but I suspect that they would do better if they got a little bit more sun. So, I'm going to let the sun shine in, let the sun shine in, the sun shine in. Okay, so now let's go outside of the blooming house. This Miho Satsuma, mm, just a little bit bigger, just a little bit. And it's still damp, but I'm going to put water in here because it can take a lot of water. I see a leaf hopper over there. Or in the um, other brown turkey fig tree. Hopefully Mr. Lizard is over there. The pears look good. Pear trees. Here is The uh, brown turkey fig tree on this side is past the fence, it's seven feet. It's shading up my calamoundin tree. It looks really good, still putting on new leaves. Real spiky thorns, 
but no fruit yet. I think it'll fruit next year. But I wouldn't be surprised if it fruited later on in the season. And black eyed peas looking good. Okra, emergency garden food. Starting to put on really nice banana plants. Just going crazy. Whoa. Just beautiful. Can't wait until we see that flower drop. I'm going to pull off the leaves up that are infected by the leaf miner to try to slow it down a little bit. And when you pull off the leaves, you um, know that you don't want to just put that down here for right now while I can get the rest of them. Uh, you don't want to put that in your compost. Just pull off any leaf that has a squiggly line to slow it down. It's a beetle that those leaf miners will turn into. I forgot what kind of beetle. But uh, you can slow down the growth. So I'm pulling anything off that is infected. And I think I accidentally bent this one. But that's okay because I have plenty more. So I have this. Let me check this plant again. Not too bad. Let's pick up all of this. The okra will go in the house. The leaves, infected leaves, will go into the trash. Let's look at that. Whoa. Look at the growth on those sweet potatoes vines so I think I've got all the leaf miners off here and I see one I hate to take this big leaf off but I'm going to and one here and several on this plant one two Three, four, five. Okay. Oh, you know what? I always rush through here to let you see the lime trees. Let me go in closer. <sighs> the lime trees and lemon trees have nice fruit on them. And elderberry, plum, and mulberry. And another elderberry right there, up high. Okay, so that's enough of the garden. Kasava is doing real good. And uh, I think the sugar cane might have gotten too much water, but it'll come back. back. Okay. I intentionally left this Home Depot bucket here that I make compost tea in so I can see about how much rain it got. And plus, I can look at the weather report. It looks like we got about a good two inches of rain. So I'm just going to water lightly later on in the day, maybe about, you know, a couple hours, and I'll lightly water the containers. And that's it. And I have... This yellow cucumber to scoop out seeds. And I had two pieces of okra right there. Yeah. And all of this I'll put in the trash in the house. This concludes this video. We leave in the morning to go to the Ozark Mountains in Missouri. And I want you guys to know that we are practicing very good safety and sanitation precautions with our masks and social distancing and hand sanitizers as much as we can. And uh, But it's just so wonderful to sit outside and breathe in fresh air without having fresh air other than my own property, I should say, without having the fear of contracting anything. It was just so refreshing, and I'm really looking forward to getting up in the mountains in Missouri. So I'll talk to you guys when I get back.
You guys know that God loves you, and I love you too. If you would like to make a donation to keep this channel going, I would appreciate it, and you can send it to my PayPal Me account. Any donation will be appreciated. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel.